welcome to episode 7 of my roguelike top down series we're now about halfway through the series and currently we've got our player being able to move around with a sword in their hand now what I want to do is actually allow the player to swing this sword and actually deal some damage with it as well so we only want damage to be dealt when our players swing the sword so let's look at how we can implement this so this is all going to be in our event sheet today but before we go into that we just need to go into our sword and add just a quick behavior and the behavior that we want is tween. Now tween allows you to animate between two different properties of an object. So for this instance, we're going to rotate between two positions, but instead of just jumping between them, we're gonna have an animation showing that change in rotation. So I'm gonna add that one, close that, and then we can move to our event sheet. First thing I'm gonna add is a new global variable. So you can do this by right clicking at the edge of the screen. I'm gonna call it sword swing. We have to work with a lot of numbers today and having all those numbers mapped to one variable makes our life much easier later down the line when we want to change how fast that sword swing is. So set to 0.1 and then press OK. Next we're going to add an event and we're going to map our sword to a key. So I'm going to actually use Z for this. Um, I could use space but I also want to have an interact key so I'm probably going to use Z and X. But use the one that you find most comfortable with. So press OK and then hit done. Then we're going to add an action and we're going to do sword and we're going to use our tween and we're looking at one property this one here and what we want to do is we want to call this swing and we want to look at the angle and the end value is going to be set to sword dot angle plus 30. Now 30 is the angle that we're going to rotate our sword to, so it's going to rotate 30 degrees, but then going to get to rotate completely the other way, and then 30 degrees again, giving us a nice little animation. If you want this to be a larger range or a bigger sword swing, we just up that number there. The time we're going to set to our variable setup called sword swing, and then that's everything that we need so far. I'm going to hit done. Now we want to tween back the way, so we can go one way and then the other. Before we do that, we need to actually let this animation finish. So we actually need to add a wait before we tween again. And to do this, just go to our systems, wait, and we're going to set this also to sword swing. So we're using that same variable again and again. We can change it at the top to make it faster, much quicker. Take the same line of code, or these two lines of code by holding shift, and copy and paste them. This time we're going to minus 60, so we're going 60 in the other direction. So this will give us a swing going back the way. And again, we're going to wait. And then finally, copy and paste once more. And then we're going back 30. So this will go right, all the way to left, and then back to center. Now it's possible after we've done this, and once we start hitting the keyboard, we can get some errors. And I want to show you what those errors look like, and then how we fix them. So first of all, let's test it. So and I press Z, we get this little funky animation, but there's no cooldown on this. So if we spam it, you can start to see that our sword gets out of place and goes at a completely different angle. And eventually it'll get to the stage where actually the sword will be inside our player, which we don't want. So after we finish this whole animation, all we want to do is add a new action and we want to do sword set angle to zero. Now zero is its default, which means that after we've done all this tweening, it will always go back to where it started. So we hit done. And now if we do the same thing again, and we hit this sword as much as we want, it always goes back to the end. It doesn't matter which direction we're facing. As we're doing this, even as we switch quickly between them, our sword always goes back to normal. So you can play around that animation and get that the way that you want to look. I found this was quite a nice little animation and again if we want to make this faster we just change this one variable at the top so let's change this to 0 0.05 instead so it's half the speed of what it was before and you see we've got this different animation now so with that set up now we need to actually make it do some damage so we don't want the sword to always attack the enemy we only want the sword to attack the enemy while it's swinging so we can add a new event onto our sword and we can make use of the tween behavior again so is playing 
and the tag we want is swing. I used capital S when I set my tween function up, so I'm making sure I'm using capital S again. So if you're not sure, check what you've got in quotations here. So is it swinging? And then finally add another condition, is sword, overlapping object, enemy. If both those conditions are true, if you're swinging, which means you're pressing the Z key, and it's overlapping enemy, then we can do enemy dot destroy. So this will kill our enemy. So let's test it. So we're going to move over to our enemy and we're going to let him attack us first and make sure the sword is overlapping, which it is. Okay, so now we've died, so it's going to restart. And now we're going to try and attack him. So you see the sword did no damage to him whatsoever. And this time we're going to let him go in there and now he's destroyed. So we can do a couple of things with this to make this a little bit more interesting. We can go to our enemy, right click and edit instance variable. I'm going to have a new one called health. So instead of him dying straight away, he can take a couple of hits. I'm going to say by default he's got two health. Like so. So that's all set up. And now instead of destroying our enemy, we can say enemy subtract from health by one. And then we can say enemy compare instance variable health equal to zero and then we destroy the enemy instead. So I can go down, enemy.destroy. What's a really good thing about this is if we drag another enemy in, so we've got a second one, and we make sure we're only clicking on that enemy and not any others, we can scroll down to its health properties here. We can make this one actually have more health. So this particular enemy has four, this other enemy only has two. So you can set up different health values for different enemies. So let's test that, make sure that's working. So I'm going to load just this first one out. And you see he's died straight away, which is not what we wanted. And the problem we've got at the moment is once we're overlapping, it's running that code 60 times a second, which is our tick speed. So we just want to add another condition, system, and trigger once while true. That should fix it. Let's try again. Should take four hits this time. And you'll see a couple more swings and then he finally died. Can I say it on this one as well before I die? No. So that's all set up now. The final thing you might want to add into this code before we move on to our next video is actually adding a penalty to using the sword. And the penalty I quite like to use is actually slowing the player down a little bit. So on Z pressed, we're going to add an action. I'm going to do player. And we're going to set max speed. Now I'm going to set it to zero very, very quickly because I don't know my player's current max speed. What I'm going to do is click on player. And the max speed is set to 75. So I'm going to set this instead to 50. And I'm going to put this at the top. And then I'm going to scroll down. Add an event, we go to sort. I'm going to do the tween is playing, and I'm going to check to swing. And then I'm going to actually invert this now. And I'm going to add an action, player, and then set max speed to 75. So this puts our player back if they're not swinging. So now I'm going to do a bit of a test. I'm going to move my player all the way to the left of the screen and move speed. And then as I swing, it's now taking me even longer to move across. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Obviously a bit of a longer one than normal. Next video, we'll start looking at some health potions that we can pick up and some random item spawns. And then to close the series off, we'll look at adding a mage, an archer class, and maybe some key doors as well. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you've subscribed and thank you very much for watching.